Welcome back to another episode of the Scoreboard Sports Talk. It's NFL season. It's back. First uh, first, first week of the NFL preseason, uh, aside from the Hall of Fame game. Smokey, how are you feeling? I'm good, man. I'm really good, and I'm ready. Oh, man. It's... I'm, I'm so ready. Been oh. waiting for a while. The yes. time between the draft and we preseason week one is the worst time of the year. It is. It's man. incredible. But we, actually we are back. We football this week, though. Yeah, we did. We we got uh, the Hall of Fame game yeah. in which your Atlanta Falcons were um well, they were present. They they well. They haven't Not won that a preseason, preseason will count for much. Falcons yeah. haven't won a preseason game in like 3 years, so. Yeah. Now, admittedly the preseason isn't the most ne- not necessarily the most important part in uh in football history, but we're hyped about it, so we're going to talk about it anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh we have a week at we have a week at training camp in the back too for a lot of teams and a lot of uh, news lines are coming up and fantasy football is shaping up so we're going to get into that soon. Uh, end of the the topic, end of the end of the podcast. You're going to have some uh, some updates, some news about the fantasy football stock market. Oh yeah, and uh, current developments. And then we're also going to look ahead on the the 2019 NFL season and we're going to be talking about some of the potential award winners. But uh, first and foremost, preseason week one. Football is back. We have some games to predict, and uh, I'm assuming we're going to predict uh, the entirety of the season. And regular season, obviously, it's going to be more important. And uh, if you feel like it, we can also put some on the line uh, because we like betting. And uh, I set up a spreadsheet to keep track of all of our sports bets, and uh, I'll be down to do that for some predictions too. Nice. I'm up. We just gotta, yeah, we gotta, we gotta uh, agree on some some stakes, but uh, I think I think we can come up with something. So, oh yeah, yeah for sure. yeah. Let's get into it. First game, all New York Jets and the Giants. What do you think about that one? Oh, okay. Adam, out of uh, Adam, uh, going in order by time. But uh, oh, oh, you know what, dude? Uh, what? We're doing uh, preseason, huh? Yes. Oh Jesus! I, I had uh, first. Did you look at week one for the regular yes, season? Yes, I did. <laughs> Just okay. Just, just listen to me. So Jets and Giants, because these are I'll sorted give you by my time. predictions, though. Okay. Sure. This is correct. What do you think? Uh, uh Jets and Giants. Uh, yeah. The Jets are going to try out a lot of new guys there. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, Giants, I predict, will be horrible in the preseason as well as the regular season. So mm-hmm. I'm going with the Jets in that one. I think Daniel Jones might see some play. Uh, probably more than Sam Darnold. No reason to play him. Uh, he's too valuable for the for the um, the regular season. He's probably yes. not going to see much play until week three uh, of the preseason. I generally think that the Jets will have a much better year, and there's no reason they shouldn't win the pre the preseason game. Even though they have, I mean, they have the time and freedom to experiment with stuff, which they have to do. They're very much um, a growing team. They're building uh, for the not too distant future at this point. So they're going to try out some guys, make sure they get their best roster together, and the uh, the Giants. Um, kind of the same. I don't think they're gonna trot out their superstars, by which I mean Saquon Barkley, uh, no, too no. much because you don't want to. He's the only guy who can save you from going 0 16 this year, frankly. So they're probably gonna uh, yeah, I, a lot of practice squad wide receivers over there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Their wide for receiver sure. core is looking horrid right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I gave the best one away. Mm-hmm. So they uh, they need to they need to provide the 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 offense with some with a second dimension basically. And Sterling uh, Shepard is injured, by the way. Yes, not that, that he that was going to play true. in this game, but no, no, that that's correct. So I I also think the Jets are probably going to take this, even though uh, you never know. It really depends on the philosophy of the coach more than team class necessarily in the preseason. Just how long are you going to keep your starters out, if at all? Oh yeah, maybe one drive if that. Yeah, potentially. So uh, we can agree on the Jets, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I next, we have the Colts and the Buffalo Bills. All right, and I imagine this is at Buffalo, huh? This is at uh, Buffalo, correct? Yes. Um. Well, of course, we're not going to see Andrew Luck if even if he wasn't with the, the yeah. heavy injury. Yeah. That right that now. that would be reckless. That would be reckless. Yeah. Um. I I don't imagine Josh Allen is going to see any time on the field if eh, other than maybe one drive or so. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, with the the rookies they have coming out, I, I I have to give it to the Colts, man, because yeah, uh, you know, even with the the preseason and practice squad guys, yeah, I think the Colts are still gonna roll over them. Uh, yeah, the, the Colts are gonna be a, a much much stronger team going into the season. Now, Bills are I I don't hate the Bills as much as I used to, but I think they're they're still uh very much uh two the three years behind the Colts in that sort of rebuilding cycle. 
Yes. Uh, now again, preseason we're, we're we're looking at third string versus third string, but I think in every single way the, the Colts have a better uh, depth chart and should win this game, and definitely are looking at a at a better season potential. Uh, I agree with the Andrew Luck situation. He's not going to see any play until like week three at the least uh, in the preseason. There's no need to. You know he can play. You don't have to give him tries. You don't have to give him reps. Um, you know Andrew Luck can play at an elite level. You've seen it before. No need to waste him or risk any sort of uh, shoulder issue or fatigue in, in the preseason. It's unnecessary. Oh, yeah. I agree. And, you know, the Bills, uh, I don't think their third string has much to show for. So we're definitely yeah. going with the Colts in this one. Yes, Tennessee Titans at the Philadelphia Eagles. Oh, man. Uh, there's no way I can go with the Titans in this one. <laughs> <laughs> there's just no, no way. No, there's uh, not. I mean, yeah, even being at Philly. The, I, don't, I don't even – you know what? I, I would put the Texans' first team up against the Eagles – third team right now and i think that would be a close match yes i i, I thought so too i was about to say they could bring marcus Mariota out all game unironically mm-hmm. and we'll probably still lose to uh to the eagle second string and that that's not even that's not even an exaggeration the titans ex we've all expected to see the titans surge up they had um th- they had all the resources in the world from that back from that jared goff trade uh, a couple of well, while years ago now uh and uh nothing came with that for some reason, they had their quarterback. They got all those resources, all those picks. They're now where they want to be. And on the other side, you got the Eagles, one of the teams that made a big trade in that draft. Went up, got Carson Wentz. They're looking good. They've already won a Super Bowl. Now, not that Carson Wentz is going to play much in in this game. Uh, same situation as with Andrew Luck. You don't have to do that. But uh, Eagles, to me, much better team. And the Titans, playoff chances. I'm just protecting to be kind of slim. I, I agree fully. Yeah, we're definitely going with the Eagles on this one. Yep. We got your Atlanta Falcons and the Miami Dolphins. And this is obviously going to be at Miami. This now, is going to be at Miami. Do you know how much I really want to say the Falcons are going to take this one, but we haven't won yeah. a preseason game in three years? So Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, you know, not that it matters really, but... Uh, you always like to see some wins, you know. Due. Be They're reassured due. in your depth. Yeah. yeah, that that is that is correct. Yes, yeah. I, this is one that I can easily see the Dolphins just take though, because why not? Uh, <laughs> why it, not? It's 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 close enough. I think Falcons are a better team. Probably going to be a better team in the regular season. Josh Rose needs a year or two, um, and uh, and the Falcons are more ready though. For the preseason, a lot of stuff can happen, and we've seen in the Hall of Fame game the Falcons are not interested in in running the first string basically at all. No, not at all. Uh, you'll probably see a lot of Brian Hill, Quadri Olsen. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, man, I, they're due. <laughs> they're due. Yeah. I, it's really a tough call, man, because I, I want to say, you know, they, they might pull this one out, but I'm, I'm yeah, going to go. Have, uh, it's better to have the wins in the regular season, though. Yeah. I'll go with the Dolphins just based on past right. luck, and that's not hitting on my Falcons because yeah. they don't care if they're not in the preseason or not. We're not counting the uh, the preseason predictions into the overall standings, by the way. So the competition yeah. starts day one of the regular season. Patriots and the Lions. Patriots and the Lions. Well, you know, the Patriots are also a team that tends to drop a lot of preseason yeah. games and then <laughs> dominate through the season. Um, This is going to be in detroit so um uh, let's, let's go with the patriots or um i'm sorry the lions yeah i, I would agree this game has just has detroit lions all over it this is classic uh beating the patriots in the preseason where it doesn't Jeez. matter at all uh, very, very much though. yeah very much typical they feel good about themselves matt but, patricia uh, beats his old yeah. team Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I think I think Bill Belichick knows what he's doing there. Yeah. Uh, Redskins and the Cleveland Browns. Oh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna look for the Browns to take this one because they're gonna be fired up. Like, yeah. I, there's I don't recall recently in, in the past five years or so any team having the excitement and the hype around it like the Browns have right now. Yeah, and even in the preseason, uh, and Washington's a dumpster fire. You know, there's there's no wide oh, receivers yeah. there. There's barely any running backs besides uh, um, Adrian Peterson and Darius Geis, who has yet to play a game in the in, yeah. in the NFL. So, 
I'm definitely going with Cleveland on this one. I would not be too surprised if the Browns actually brought out their whole first string for like a quarter straight, just to come <laughs> out, come out fire and just be like, we can win football games. Like we got it now. So <laughs> yeah, would not be surprised if we see all these guys out there, Baker, you know, Odell, Jarvis Landry, um, just to you know make a statement. Oh, not that yeah. it would matter result wise, but uh, the the Browns are a team to be reckoned with, no no doubt. And I I also would expect them to to take this Jaguars oh, and Baltimore Ravens. Wow, battle of defenses here. Oh, yeah. Um, you know what? They're they're trying out that new triple option, so I would not be surprised to see Lamar Jackson a, a, at least mm-hmm. more than a drive or so. Uh, maybe you know as much as three or four drives yeah. in this game. Um, Jaguars, you know they got Nick Foles there, so who knows? You know if they may decide to give him a few reps out there. Um, it's tough. I, I'm gonna go with the Ravens though. Uh, I'll actually pick, I'll actually just pick the Jaguars. Uh, uh-huh. I think the defense seems more solid to me because Baltimore. You look at the Baltimore defense. You look at uh, at veteran guys like Earl Thomas. He, mm-hmm. he, there's no reason, no no need for him to take the field. Jaguars. You got rookies. You know, you got young guys. Uh, Josh Allen. He wants snaps, and he's got he's gonna get snaps. So it just makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and if you put a guy like Josh Allen up against second tier, third string offensive lineman, he's gonna he's gonna eat. So uh, give me the Jaguars there, but it's gonna be a defensive game. It Houston is, Texans, is. Houston Texans going to Green Bay. Texans at Green Bay. Um, you know, even though it's in Green Bay, Green Bay is still a dumpster fire outside of maybe number Allen. twelve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, Rodgers and Jones. I, you know, I'll, I'll put Aaron Jones in there. Um, but, yeah. Uh, I guess Devonte. I guess Devonte Adams yeah, is a good player. I don't think either one of those guys, or either one of those three guys, no, are, are going no. to see the field in this that, game. That would be that would be insane. Correct. Uh, I'm going with the Texans on this one. I I, t- I would tend to agree. Packers, uh, the limited resources that they have, they're going to preserve for the for the regular season for sure. Oh, Panthers, yeah. uh, Carolina Panthers uh, at Chicago. At Chicago, wow. Hey, here's what I hope. I hope they destroy the Panthers, and I hope the Panthers <laughs> don't make it back. Not even, but, not even the preseason, like not even preseason, <laughs> really. That way, they'll have no depth chart, you know. <laughs> Fair enough. You have that much hate for the division. I mean, it's, no, I mean, no, so no. do I. It's... Uh, well, you know, I, I mean, of course, I want the Falcons to win, but I don't. It's uh-huh. not like I hate the Panthers like the Saints or yeah. something, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I, I think I, 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 think I would agree though. On this one. Yeah, we would agree. Bears have a solid defense, even second string. They're not going to jog their their top goons out there, obviously, but even second string, the Bears' defense is solid. I oh, uh, yeah. wouldn't be surprised to see Mitch Trubisky take a, a drive or two, and uh, I doubt Cam Newton's going to see much play, and neither is Christian McCaffrey, so yeah. I'll take the, the Bears, too. Uh, Broncos. See... Oh, go ahead. Keep, keep going. What do you say? Oh, I was going to say, you may not see Khalil Mack, but you may see some uh, few drives or a few series from uh, some of the defensive guys, like the second year guys, like a Roquan Smith or something. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, sure. Well, why not? They, those guys, they still need snaps for, for these guys. It's, it's, it's fine. Oh, um, yeah. Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks. Broncos and the Seahawks. Uh, it's another battle of the D de- or the once great defenses. I will say yeah. uh, Von Miller still there. He's probably not going to see any time. It's in this a game. Super Bowl rematch. It is. It is. And <laughs> Seahawks, destroyed the Broncos in that Super Bowl. Mm. Um, Don't remind me. <laughs> I hated both of them. As a, as a matter yeah, of fact. I, I, I can never hate anything as much as the Seahawks. So I was kind of, I was kind of with the Broncos there, but that was not a, that was not a pleasant game. Oh no, not at all. Especially <laughs> for right from the opening snap to. Yeah, it was. Um, I, I'm gonna go. Uh, we probably see Drew Locke in this game uh, mm-hmm. a good bit because he definitely yeah. needs reps. He he looked bad in that game the other night. Um, mm, it's tough. We may see some DK Metcalf out there for the Seahawks. Uh, I'm gonna oh, yeah. the Seahawks on this one. Let me let me take the Broncos. Let me. It doesn't count anyway. So let me just be a homer. Let me let me wish rather than predict for a bit yeah. and. Uh, like kind of with kind of you with the Saints, I don't want the Seahawks to have any kind of one in their record. So no, no, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bron- Broncos are, t- are taking this all the way. Chargers and the Cardinals. Oh, maybe some Kyler Murray in this one. Presumably, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
they're going to be in Arizona and they're going to be trying out that high intensity explosive air raid offense I imagine yeah and I I, don't, I, I would think we could see Kyler Murray for a quarter and I I I would say? think so yeah I, I would I would think so for sure yeah he he needs the reps he's got to get get used yeah. to start, to the NFL play now if I'm the if I'm the Chargers listen um I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make it easy I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a mean guy man I I buy Trotta Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa I'll see if I can <laughs> I see if I can't get Kyler Murray to quit before the regular season starts man just why not you know put put pressure <laughs> yeah. on the guy man first overall pick so uh, he's, he's got I, I still think. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going with the Chargers. Yes, I think Kyler is going to have a, a tough time. Now, I, I, I don't doubt his talent. I see how he could easily win uh, preseason games. I think he's more, more athletic, and you know, playing third string defenses, he, it's going to be like in college. He's going to be the fastest guy on the field, and uh, he's, he's gonna, he's gonna make stuff happen for sure. But I'm still going to pick the Chargers anyway because I think he's going to struggle in the opener. You know what? I, I'm going with the Cardinals because hmm? I think the Chargers are really not going to care at this point you know it would yeah. be nice to see him you know put up some legitimate yeah. defense against this kid but I, sure. I don't really think they're going to care that much and they're not the, division rivals the Cardinals, the cardinals are going to be looking to build some steam and some confidence so yeah. uh, i wouldn't i wouldn't uh doubt seeing them go all out so yeah. i'm going with the buccaneers cardinals. buccaneers at pittsburgh bucks at pittsburgh uh Dumpster fire on the field versus mm. dumpster fire in the locker room. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go with Pittsburgh in this one. We'll probably see a little uh, bit of Benny Snell running out there in this game. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, maybe. This is uh, not going to be that much of an exciting game to watch. No, I think both those all. teams are, are firmly implanted in mediocrity and set to go to achieve nothing in, in this season, regular season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me just call. Let me just call a three to three tie. Well, whatever, it's preseason. Hey, you know what? Since we're talking, <laughs> I like that pick. Since we're talking about Pittsburgh, there is a huge Pittsburgh fan that uh, watches every one of our episodes, and it happens to okay. be Hollywood's stepdad. So okay. I just wanted to give a shout out to Hollywood's stepdad. Sure, sure. And he hates when we bash the Steelers. I'm, 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 I'm terribly sorry about what happened to your team over the last <laughs> couple of years, man. Best hope yeah. Ben pulls one out there. Oh, that's crazy. Vikings oh, yeah. and the and the New Orleans Aints. The Aints. The Taints. The Aints. <laughs> I'm going with the Vikings, even though. Oh, uh, you're going. Oh, surprise. <laughs> and it's going to be in New Orleans, so this is horrible. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah. Well, the the good thing about this game is there's going to be no Drew Brees, no Alvin yeah. Kamara. Hopefully no. Well, Michael Thomas, presumably. Yeah. yeah. See, I like. I like. I want to be a country, and I'm just gonna pick the Saints because why not? Yeah. Just do it, <laughs> and uh, we'll see. <laughs> it's the preseason. We we can yeah. uh, we can lead, You know, take some take some chances. Rams and the Raiders. Rams and Raiders. Uh, <laughs> talk about two opposite ends of the spectrum mm. from California. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I, I'm, I believe in the Super Bowl hangover. Okay. And I, I don't. I think they're going to be too high on themselves. I know the Raiders. John Gruden's going to have those guys looking to build some steam for the season and looking to mm-hmm. build some confidence as well. So why wouldn't the Raiders just come in and sneak one away from the Rams here? See, see, I believe in uh, the HBO producer sitting in uh, in John Gruden's ear, being like, "Can you put a B out on the field for a driver too, man? <laughs> we gotta get, we gotta get these quotas. You know, we gotta get our shows show being watched. So, uh, yeah, g- give me the Raiders. We know historically speaking, hard knocks is necessarily the best uh, way for a team to prepare for a season with the with all the um, interfering with training camp. But uh, the Raiders have been assigned that role. It's gonna be fun to watch. Oh yeah, uh, and. Uh, yeah, I think I think they're gonna they're gonna I think I mean they're gonna put on a bit of a show, no doubt. If if there's a, like I listen, I can't wait to see the whole Antonio Ron Vontes perfect shenanigans, right? It's it's gonna oh, be yeah. fantastic. That's that's oh, a match boy. made in heaven. Comedy no. heaven if anything. Oh yeah. That's gonna be fantastic. I'll Derek pick the, cry, yeah. Derek Carr cry a couple times. <laughs> I'll pick the I'll pick the Raiders. Um, why not? Right? <laughs> yeah, Come regular season, this is gonna couldn't be more different. But why not? <laughs> yeah. Bengals and the Chiefs. Also speaking about regular yeah. season, it couldn't be more different. You got the the 
Dalton line and the Mahomes line. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one guy's bringing up the rear and one guy's leading the pack. Um, mm-hmm. Neither one will see time in this game. Uh, uh, trying to think of who would be playing in this game. Um, Maybe I, Andy Reid. Maybe he could still throw some footballs. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, why not? Why not? Decent quarterback, I mean. Yeah. Wasn't it Andy Reid that had the, uh, what was it, the Virginia rushing record before Mike Vick? I, I think I think so. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Awesome. some some of these coaches they might have it, man. I I just I just recently fun fact, right? But I I just recently rewatched um All or Nothing with the Dallas Cowboys, dude. Jason Garrett was he was outperforming Dak Prescott at every practice, man. <laughs> he he yeah. still had it. He still had it. Oh yeah. So who do you got in this one? Uh, hmm. Going with the Chiefs. Mm, you know, yeah, uh, sure. They're probably going to be taking it easy, but I'll still go with them. I mean, they're yeah. such a better team than the Bengals. E- easy go, easy going Chiefs is uh, still more than Bengals <laughs> trying their hardest. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. but that's that's just how it is. Uh, and finally, Sunday night late game: Cowboys and the Forty ers Traditional rivalry. Oh yeah, this might actually See, be a good yeah. matchup here. This used to be the NFC Championship game, like yeah, every that's... year. Oh yeah, Montana could tell you about that. Yeah, and now it's um, been uh, you know no, nobody was born when either of those teams won their last Super Bowl. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, let's see. I, and it's obviously in San Francisco. I'm going with the 49ers. All right, uh, I am too. Obviously, of we don't count points anyway. Um, who would I be to not pick my team? No, I know uh, firsthand, not firsthand, but I've heard it from Kyle Shanahan. Jimmy Garoppolo's not going to play, which is, in my opinion, a, a wise decision. Why would he? Um, he's had a year of recovery, obviously. Just let him be ready, like firmly ready for week one of the regular season. That's all we need. Um, 49ers, like pro- arguably the position that they are strongest in the league is the backup quarterback. Mm-hmm. With Nick Mullins, who could easily start yeah. for I want to say uh, a half a dozen teams in the league, and uh, well, yeah, he's going to he get was, some reps. He was great. Bethard's going to Bethard's going to get some reps, uh, oh, and uh, the decent wide receiver depth, if no great standouts, but a bunch of rookies: Jalen Hurd, Debo Samuel, uh, who are both starter quality in the NFL, but they're still going to get reps in the preseason, which why which is why I think they're the the Niners' quality will probably be be a bit higher than what the Cowboys are bringing out. Yeah. Yeah, and the Cowboys are—they're—they're they're not gonna throw anybody out there, anybody no. of note. So yeah, yeah Zeke Elliott isn't even with the team. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dak Prescott makes no sense to play in the big defensive names. Uh, maybe Leighton Van Der Esch, but not even him. Like he's established enough; he doesn't even need him. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't think they're gonna take it that seriously. Yeah, definitely not. So uh, that's that's for topic. I think uh, now, of course, preseason predictions is a, is is a thing for itself. We're we're definitely always going to pick our own teams. I think that's that's fairly obvious because uh, when it doesn't count, it's it's fine to be a homer uh, for all that we want. But some I'm gonna more do that in the regular season also, unless it's blatantly obvious. You got to pick the. Are you going to pick the Falcons when they play the Saints? Yes. In the regular season, really. Yes. Yes. I, I smell I, I, sm- I smell weekly bets coming when that hey, happens. When is that not a close game, though? Like, I don't know, but you, I mean, I'm not I'm not going to do it unless something happens to, like, Breeze and Camara. I know it's it's usually a close game, but that's because the Saints defense is stinking it up. Mm-hmm. But, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see when we yeah, get there. We'll, but, we'll uh, see. <laughs> we can go into that later. Uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be willing to, to put some bets on that stuff. I had a whole soliloquy I was about to bust out on you, but we'll, we'll save it until we get. To <laughs> we'll we'll keep we'll keep it for the regular season. All right, let's get yeah. into the second one though. Uh, we have some NFL awards, as a matter of fact, yearly, and uh, we are going to predict or give some uh, estimations for who could be the uh, recipient of those awards in the upcoming season. Who's got some good shots? So we're gonna start off with the big one, MVP. MVP, start right at the top, huh? Yeah. This this was a tough one. You know what? Uh, I actually penciled in two names before I came to my final decision. Um, All right. I started off throwing Andrew Luck in there. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to be a contrarian. I'm going to go with an unlikely candidate, but likely if you really look at the situation, Baker Mayfield. 
Oof. Okay. And yeah, I mean, yeah, it was out there, but uh, and it's contrarian, but there is a big possibility that this could happen. There is, a, there's a chance, man. If if any quarterback is in a good situation, it's it's him for Which, sure. Yes, and that exact reason brings me to my final decision: who I'm actually picking, Carson Wentz. I was gonna surprise everyone with the Carson Wentz pick, but you did <laughs> no, it first. Oh, really? See, I had I had Patrick Mahomes written down. I was like, that's that's too easy, too obvious. No, it's yeah. gonna be Carson Wentz. I think the Eagles are still very much up there. They're one of the best teams in the league. They're stacked. Um, the offense is, has not gotten any worse. And if he can stay healthy, play sixteen games, we know he can do it. We know he's he's of that caliber because we've seen him. He's done it before several times. Um, just gotta put it all together and play the full sixteen games. I believe that's basically a requirement these days to to win MVP because. Uh, the top quarterbacks there are so close together. Uh, yeah, I also have Carson Wentz, but uh, there's a. Uh, I understand that Patrick Mahomes is the odds on favorite. There's no reason he wouldn't be. Andrew Locke seems like a good call. You generally want to say Aaron Rodgers because generally Aaron Rodgers is the, the best football player in the league. But mm-hmm. we, I think we both can agree that uh, the MVP award to a degree will always factor in team performance and, and actually yes. record winning success. And um and we know that the, the Packers aren't gonna go like they're not gonna win twelve thirteen games. They just can't do it. No, uh, no. They may make the wild card though. They they might. They might have to fight uh, in a division that's much that's outclassed them in every other position other than quarterback. Uh Aaron Rodgers is a candidate, but he's gonna have to pull miracles out. Not even minor miracles, major miracles, because the team is just so mediocre, actually so bad around him. So we, we agree on Carson Wentz. That's that's yes. interesting. How about the Offensive Player of the Year, then? Offensive Player of the Year, I'm going with... I didn't want to be, you know, the, the same old... The MVP should be the Offensive Player of the Year, mm. but uh, that's not fun. So uh, I'm going with Saquon Barkley. Come on, dude. Is that what you <laughs> yeah, yeah, listen. Next time I'm going first, right? I'm, I'm. We're, we're alternating now by going first. And you, you're making it seem like I'm cheating off your notes, dude. That's <laughs> not cool. Yeah, uh, Saquon yeah. Barkley, because uh, the offensive defensive players of the year are um, sort of the the derivative of the MVP, where uh, team success isn't that necessary. So uh, mm-hmm. for those, it's like yeah, it can be someone who's really just you know the one guy for their team. And the MVP is too too prestigious to give it to a player of a losing team. Uh, Saquon Barkley is the only thing that the Giants have. That's it's he's the only thing that uh, the New York Giants have this year. He's the only thing. The That's one right. guy that can keep him from being the worst team in the league, and uh, he's gonna have to do that. By the way, I I I see a good chance. By the way, that he's gonna be the um, third running back in history to amass a, a thousand uh, receiving and rushing yards within the same season. Uh, he's primed for that, and if possible, he's going to do it this year. By the way, pop quiz, who were the first two guys to do it? The Give me the stats again, the first two. A thousand rushing yards and a thousand receiving yards in the same season by a running back. Oh, the first two. Uh, what years are we talking about? How far are we going back? Uh, we're talking like 20 years back and like 30 to 35 years back. Like a while ago. It doesn't happen that much. Hmm. Uh, was it Emmett Smith? No. Nah, he wasn't Emmett Smith. He ran. A, he ran a lot. It was first. Yeah. It was Roger Craig. Roger Craig with the with the Forty uh, ers uh, and uh, and Marshall Falk actually in the Greatest Show. Ah, uh, Marshall Falk. I should have known that yeah. one. And uh, David Johnson was coming kind of close to it, and he was probably announced that he was going to do it like a couple years yeah, ago. But I can see. I can actually see season. Saquon because Saquon is low key the best receiver on the Giants. Mm-hmm. And uh, obviously, he's going to be the focal point <laughs> yeah. of that offense. Well, the, uh, let's get it to... Besides Ingram, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, in- Ingram is the only other receiver they have on the field right now. So, Saquon is yeah. going to get all the work. Yes, exactly. Let's get to uh, Defensive Player of the Year. And I'm going to go first, uh, just in case you're trying to, to steal my pick again. <laughs> I got... I, listen, I got Khalil Mack. Oh, okay. Well, we differ a little bit. I have Aaron Donald. Okay, yeah, I, th- I thought I thought you I thought you might I thought yeah. I thought you might and uh, see the thing is with Aaron Donald um, the uh, he he okay last year obviously played next to Dominican Sue which is considerable not doubting Aaron Donald's talent at all rightfully deserved uh, number one player of last of last year on the on the NFL top 100 list obviously um, yes. and I think there's a there's a good chance he can repeat um, you. Things you got to consider, though, both the Seahawks and 49ers offensive line is definitely are tending upwards. They've gotten better. 
Um, so that would that would suggest that his stats would, would drop slightly. Uh, not not doubting his class though, but I got Khalil Mack because he's gonna dominate his division for sure. And yeah, uh, yeah. no doubt about if, that. Yeah, if he puts up stats like he did last year, it's gonna be. I mean, there's there's can't be much of an argument about it. And um, next we have the offensive and uh, defensive rookies of the year. Uh, you can go ahead with your uh, offensive rookie of the year. So uh, hopefully we don't agree on that. Maybe we do. <laughs> Offensive Rookie of the Year. I don't think you're going to agree with me, but I'm picking Josh Jacobs of the Raiders. <laughs> See, the thing is, like, how to pick an Offensive Rookie of the Year is first draft a running back, right? But yes. um, it's it's the first of all, it's the Raiders, and <laughs> yeah. it's not necessarily it wasn't necessarily the best running back class we've seen. No, so, it wasn't. But I think c- compared to other he has bla- no classes. competition there, and they're going to depend heavily on the running game this season. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's true. I mean, it, it's it's look at um, Saquon Barkley last season with his horrible yes. team. So, yeah, but you, know, you got you got be... Antonio you got Antonio Brown. You know he he demands his touches. That's true, and he's gonna cry if he doesn't get them. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but I, I still see uh, Josh Jacobs getting a ton of work, and all he has to do is punch through for a touchdown every game and a half. You know, but yeah, 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 and and probably rack up a uh, thousand, well, thousand three hundred, four hundred yards, probably. <laughs> it's possible. So, it's possible. It's gonna be tough, but uh, maybe. Yeah, I I actually have um I have Marquise Brown for the Baltimore oh, Ravens. Wow. Really? Uh, one of my favorite, yeah, one of my favorite receivers. See, this guy is uh he's a home run hitter. Um, fast guy reminds me a lot of Marquise Goodwin. Um, not only because of the first name, but because yeah. he is really that good and that fast. And, does it uh, remind you of Antonio Brown? <laughs> uh, does it remind you of Antonio Brown? Uh, nah, they're kind of different types of players, actually. Yeah, but uh, I, th- I think, yeah, that that's true. Um, I think, I think. Um, wait, is it was it was it Marquise? Wasn't it AJ Brown? Am I mistaken? No, is the AJ Brown or? Am I, I thought AJ Brown. I think AJ Brown was Antonio's cousin. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure, but uh, all right, I'm, you I'm talk. Not sure. I'm gonna check that because I thought I think sure I think Marquise, maybe, maybe I'm mistaken. I don't know. I know I know one of them was, uh, but yeah, he's a home run hitter and he can uh, explode for for Baltimore in that uh, explosive offense. People are gonna have to contain Lamar Jackson. They're not gonna be able to to double Brown the whole time, and uh, you still have a viable running game. I think he has good chances if that offense actually grips. Oh yeah, and by the way, it is Marquise Brown. It is Marquise Brown. All right, then I, I was somehow was informed. That is that is interesting. Yeah, I thought that was a big uh, thing that they kept throwing around during the Oklahoma yeah. games last season. But. Yeah, I, I kind of when I was looking at Marquise Brown, I was also scouting AJ Brown at the same time. Oh yeah, because I had I had them both on my top five receivers list for the draft. So they were, oh, I was looking at a lot of lot of lot of film at the same time. All right, defense rookie of the year, man. Who do you got? Nick Bosa. Thank you. I stole your pick, right? Yeah, you did. That yeah. is that is correct. Uh, I think there's two kind of viable candidates there, both and Quinn and Williams, uh, yeah. interchangeably viewed basically as the top players in the draft. I thought um, about Quinn. and yeah, and also. Oh, uh, oh, go ahead. And also for for this award now, uh, I also have Nick Bosa, mm-hmm. uh, specifically specifically because. Uh, I think that he's further ahead in his pro style or pro fit technique. He's a very technical player. We saw with Joey Bosa. He's too, a lot of, been pretty much a carbon copy of, of his brother, uh, with the exception that he he's a little bit better in rushing from the uh, the three technique. Uh, I think he's got he's working with a little bit more power uh, than 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 Joey is, whereas Joey's more of a, a length guy around the edge. But uh, they're very very similar players. And uh, the the 49ers defensive line, for all intents and purposes, they need to they need to deliver, uh, because they have first round picks all over the D line, literally everybody there. D Ford coming in from the Chiefs, and uh, yeah, but Bosa I think is the most pro ready player in the draft. Uh, he's mm-hmm. technically super sound. Uh, he's been playing like a professional f- his entire career in college, at least the last uh, last year or so. And then Joey Bosa has done the same. And projecting that onto Nick, uh, I think I think they're very similar players. And he has the the best chance, and he's definitely the safest pick for it because there's virtually no bust potential with him. Yeah, I agree fully. You know, I, I was also thinking about Quinn and Williams, um, but the the thing that pushed me toward uh, Nick Bosa was that Quinn and Williams is already having some injury problems up there yeah. in New York. So, 
Uh, just to be safe, I went ahead and went with Nick Bosa, yeah. but I think those two guys are one and two for sure. All right, comeback player of the year, and I'm going to start with that one because there's a decent chance you're still on my pick. Actually, I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna just quickly uh, you know um, be a bit proud of how humble I am about this because I'm not picking Jimmy Garoppolo. Oh, even that's though what I was thinking even, you were going. even though Jimmy Garoppolo right now is the odds-on favorite to win this award, I've looked right. it up before I made my prediction. He's the the odds-on favorite. I'm picking Le'Veon Bell. Uh, wow. Because listen, listen, um, comeback player doesn't necessarily mean he got injured. Listen, he hasn't been playing all year. A uh, whole lot, obviously, didn't want to play. Wasn't cool with his contract situation. It's a comeback year for him. He's with a new team. It's it's a fresh start, and he's gonna be a, a big part of that team. Big part of that team. The Jets are looking uh, up, and I think Levin Bell is gonna be the featured guy. He's gonna make it happen. He's coming off of he's relatively fresh because he didn't get around to the ground last year, obviously, and he's gonna he's gonna be looking to prove some things. I just, I mean, it's really hard to see him getting through that O line like he did with Pittsburgh. That O line is much, much different than the Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, and his running style, you know how he does that hesitation and then look for mm-hmm. the gap and stop, stop, hold on. Now I can go this way. You're not going to have that kind of time there in New York. But, you know, I'm yeah, not down in your but pick the, but at the all, Bills. But. The Bills and Dolphins defensive line aren't exactly the the Browns and Ravens defenses though. Oh, that's so true. they're you, you, I mean you still got the Patriots, there. but um mm-hmm. he's he's gonna have to a degree he's gonna have an easier time, I think, with, with the defenses he's facing. Now granted he's gonna he's gonna have more responsibilities here than he will have than he did in Pittsburgh because it's a strong passing game, better quarterback, Sam Donald's in the second year. Uh but I think this is exactly what the situation that he wants to be in and that he's made to, to be in as the, the featured guy in the offense. Well, we're definitely going to see what he's made of this year. Yeah. So, uh, last one. Yeah, coach my... of the year. One of my favorites. Uh, what were you going to say? The coach of the year. Oh, I didn't give out my comeback player. Oh, oh yeah. I, I, forget, I forget. Who do you got? Uh, you're going to love this one. I'm going with Deion Jones. All right. <laughs> I, am I going to love that one? I don't know. I'm not so sure about that one. You know, I but, always yeah, put David Johnson in there, but then mm, I thought, yeah. well, he played the entire season, and it wasn't like he was just extremely horrible. You know, I wanted to go with David Johnson because I think he is going to return back yeah, to his, yeah. you know, normal state and be he, he kind of He, he kind of has to also, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's fair enough. Uh, I think, okay, uh, I, I was I was kind of expecting you like halfway to do the honors and pick Jimmy. Uh, I didn't want to do it because I'm you know too humble for that. Oh, I thought but, about uh, Jimmy, but I thought you were gonna pick him. <laughs> yeah, see, see, that's that's reverse psychology right there. <laughs> yeah. So let, let's do let's do coach of the year, man. Who do you have as as your coach of the year? Oh, I got my man Frank Reich. <sighs> did you pick him? Come on, yes, of course. Oh, of course. I was trying to be fancy here. I was trying to be cool. Uh, I was like, oh, Andy Reid, Sean McVay, the obvious guys. But nope, Frank Reich, uh, Indianapolis Colts, one of my favorite teams to watch in the upcoming season. I expect big things. This team is ready. No yeah. no need. Like, with it, with the Super Bowl, uh, if we are Indianapolis, just, just think it's Super Bowl. Um, there's really nothing else to do. The O-line is now ready. Andrew Luck is now ready. He's top three quarterback in the league. Uh, mm-hmm. Offense is firing. You drafted um, Darius Leonard, one of an in- instant superstar on your defense defensive uh, front. There's no need to be hesitant here, man. Frank Reich's done a hell of a job last year, and uh, he's he's in that he's in that running. And if the Colts win oh, 11, yeah. 12 games, I think he's a front runner for that award because uh, we we know what Andy Reid, Sean McVay can do, no doubt. Uh, Kyle Shanahan, I think, has a, a decent shot at it. Maybe even. Uh, I don't want to say a guy like Cliff Kingsbury, but it's it's possible if for some reason yeah. they were to explode, which I which I personally they have believe a miraculous in. season. Yeah, uh, Freddie Kitchens yeah. is a guy you have to think about because he's kind of new on the scene and he's got obviously got great players to to work with. But yeah, I'm, I'm picking Frank Wright. Yeah, I, uh, of course I agree fully. You know, Shanahan does have a chance if he gets deep into the playoffs. Yeah, he yeah he's definitely way up there. I think so. He's he's you know, very much from the same school as Sean McVay and and Andy Reid to a degree. So that's that's always in the ballpark. Yeah, and of course they love that Sean McVay tree. Uh, yes. Frank Reich though, man, if they get to 
I don't even want to say the AFC Championship. If they get into the playoffs, I think he's a shoe in. Oh yeah, uh, yeah the way I, he I turned would. around this team last season from the horrible dumpster fire that they were two seasons ago <laughs> and yes. three seasons ago, and the Chuck Pagano days, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, Frank Wright. Uh, I think, is, I think, uh, I think, uh, Coach of the Year is also it's it's kind of a projection like the MVP sort of thing where uh, mm-hmm. it's usually an offensive coach. Uh, um, Preferably yet even a, a play caller themselves, like McVay and then Shanahan, for example. See, so you don't you don't oh, see yeah. Bill Belichick being the coach of the year as much, uh, uh, even though I mean he should be every year if we're gonna be completely objective about this. He's the yeah, the most important really. important piece to the Patriots, most important coach in the league, and has been so forever. But he's a def- he's a defensive first guy. Uh, he's yeah. more of a disciplinarian, um, motivator sort of guy. Not necessarily a flashy, you know, breaking off of records, uh, trick plays, putting up fancy stuff. Innovator sort of coach, and those are usually the more recognized ones. You saw with Doug Peters and you saw with Sean McVay. Uh, so I think the the offensive guys are have have so, somewhat of an advantage. Which brings me to this point: uh, don't count out Bruce Arians if he happens to <laughs> turn that team around down there in Tampa Bay. Yeah, if if he turns that team around, then then very much so. Yes. Uh, I I'm not I'm not gonna be a believer in that though because the pieces to to me are not really there, offensively. Well, I, I think they have great players. I mean, you have Chris Godwin and Mike uh, Evans. Yeah, Mike Evans and their well, their running back situation is not great right now. Yeah, but you know, Jameis Winston is not is not there with Jared Goff, pa- Patrick Mahomes, Carson Wentz to operate with. You know, I still haven't given up on Jameis Winston. I still think there's a chance that he could break out. All there. right. I mean, it's kind of a, it's kind of last chance now, though. Like for no, it time. is. This is definitely last. Like, chance. like I remember the two two contracts. Yeah, though. two years ago on Hard Knocks, they were talking about you know this is your last chance, and then now two years later we're still at it. So this is the last chance because yeah, you got no, if he you got two it up this year. There's nothing beyond this. You got two know. quarterbacks in the next two drafts that are going to be all stars from day one in two and, and Trevor Lawrence and. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, if you're the the Buccaneers, you haven't done anything with Jameis Winston, number one overall pick for five years. Uh, you're looking to move on. You just have to. That's how the league works. Oh yeah. So uh, that's that. Yes. Preseason that's it. preseason prediction in the books. Uh, award predictions in the books. It is also fantasy season though, and uh, that is your favorite time of the year. And I, to me, it's also very much a welcome aspect of football season. What's the news, man? Oh, what's the news? We have a lot of fantasy football news this week. Uh, no big um, story. Well, we have the the one big story that's been going on for a couple weeks, and we'll get to that last. But let's start with a few smaller, minor things. Uh, Dante Moncrief has a finger injury, which shouldn't shouldn't be too severe. But uh, well, really, let, I'm gonna put it this way: Who's drafting Dante Moncrief? I've heard hype about him every season. Mm-hmm. But he he never performs. He never produces. Yeah. Why do people keep hyping Dante Moncrief? I don't care what team he's on. <laughs> he's not going to produce. Guys, give up on uh, watch him go off for like a thousand yards. Yeah. A top five <laughs> receiver? Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, everybody knows that Dante Foreman got cut from the Texans, and mm-hmm. he has been claimed by the Colts. Yeah. So, wow, that. That's an amazing running back situation they have there with yes, Marlon, Marlon Mack, Mack. And Naheem Himes, and now Dante Foreman. All these guys were great coming out of college, and uh, Marlon Mack actually performed well at the end of last season. Oh, and that's yeah. one of my oh, yeah. breakout candidates for this season. So yeah, that running back situation there is going to be amazing. Just one more reason why Frank Reich is probably going to be coach of the mm-hmm. year. Um. Uh, the only thing is Foreman, you know, of course they cut him because they're saying there's some uh, uh, locker room situations going on or something. But uh, just keep an eye on it, you know. He might be in a really deep league. He's probably a really good pickup. Um, over with the Bears, they're uh, reporting right now that there is a significant role for Montgomery. David Montgomery 
is probably going to be the lead back. Everybody's looking toward Tyreek Cohen because he has produced the past few yeah. years, but I think they want David Montgomery to be the guy that Jordan Howard was supposed to be. Yes. And he's going to be that, that guy running up the middle, pound it down the middle, you know, third third down, um, goal line work. Let's go with David Montgomery this year. Rookie, but rookie running backs tend to perform, so – Everybody keep an eye on him. He's a good one to draft. Yep. Bears um, but I I would agree that, you know, the uh the, the Chicago Bears bottom leg is most certainly their offense. I mean if they can get it together and put points up, their defense is gonna is gonna play up to championship level. So that's that's gonna be a kind of the unit to watch. Oh yeah. Uh over on your team, the Niners. Now oh. Derek McKinnon has been activated from the yep. list. So he's going to get to play this year, which makes it more interesting and harder to choose from him and Coleman. Yeah. Even uh, Matt man. Rita. I mean, as so the, the, yeah. no, the newest uh, the newest piece of information I've gotten on the, the running back depth chart actually has uh, McKinnon at three uh, behind Rita and, and Tevin Coleman. I mean, they're going to be sharing a lot of mm-hmm. carries and catches there, along with even Kyle Juszczyk. Um, for an individual, there, there's... The thing is, there's no bell cow in that offense, and you know firsthand that's how how Kyle Shanahan likes to run his offense with uh, three starting caliber running backs, or even four. Um, so, is there like an individual guy that you actually have listed really high, or what, what's kind of your your stock for even Tevin Coleman right now? Well, uh, he was probably around seventh round for me, mm-hmm. um, because he he's definitely not in that top tier. We don't know. I mean. We, we know that Kyle Shanahan likes the committee back. Yeah. You know, he, he loves to run the committee. He loves to get two to three running backs involved in every game. So you can't draft him high. You can't draft either yeah. one of these three guys high. And I, I know, as a matter of fact, McKinnon and all the drafts I've been doing has been going over uh, Breda. But all right. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I can understand why. Late pickup, a really late round pickup, yeah. man. I, I like, I like the Breda pick a lot. If I can get it late, he could actually have the Tevin Coleman role to Tevin Coleman. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be pretty neat. Um, the Colts rookie Paris Campbell is still out with a hamstring injury. Um, he's probably third on the depth chart anyway, so. If you were planning on drafting Paris Campbell because you think he's going to break out somehow, uh, keep drafting T.Y. Hilton and don't worry about it until... You know, hamstring injuries tend to linger with wide receivers throughout the season. So it's kind of a scary situation if you've already drafted and you took him late in the draft. But Cooper Cup is now taking contact. He's back from his ACL tear last season. And... He's full practice right now, doing really well. So, Cooper Cup, the slot receiver there, gets a ton of touchdowns for a slot receiver mm. for being third on the depth chart in the first place, um, or third wide receiver that is uh, for the team. All three of those guys, isn't that an amazing situation when you can get production out of all <laughs> yeah. three receivers oh, in the absolutely. same game? Absolutely, and and don't I mean you got a running back too. Yeah, who's yeah. gonna who's gonna call for touches? Obviously, but uh, load management is a possibility. You know that he's got an injury history, and uh, yeah. if you have the the luxury to have the the passing weapons in the in the building, I I, I can see Cooper Cup um, putting in a major comeback season. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, the last thing, the big thing, Ezekiel Elliott. Uh, the the, yeah. the word that's coming out right now, a source tells ESPN's Josina Anderson that the Cowboys or the Cowboys Ezekiel Elliott is not likely to hold out into the season. All right. Now we we didn't think he was going to hold out into the season throughout this entire ordeal, mm-hmm. but the closer we get and he still hasn't shown up to camp, the more it scares you like it can't be a Le'Veon yeah. Bell situation because he's not in a contract year and he's still on the rookie contract at that but it does start to scare you that he could miss games and you're gonna have to draft him in the first three picks oh if yeah you want him if if you want him you guys early yeah and you don't want your number one pick your first round pick your top three pick 
holding out of games. You need him in every single game. So it's getting kind of scary with Elliott. Uh, but what do you, what do you mm-hmm. think, Alex? You see him coming back before the season starts? Uh, I mean, I, I imagine he would. I mean, there's what do you what do you really do if you're the Cowboys? You rely on that guy to to be any sort of productive on on your offense. That's just simply the truth, and it's been the truth since he, since he came into the league. He's the centerpiece of that that team, and um, you, you have to you have to get Elliott to play. That's that's all. That's all yeah. I gotta say. If you're if you're the Cowboys for Jerry Jones, man, you you better open up that wallet because you're not winning if you don't. Uh, Alfred Morris is, is not gonna hold up that end. No, field. no, he's not. He's just it's just not this. Not even the same. Uh, not even the same uh, tier of, of running back at all. No. Now I know that the the Cowboys have a decently talented team, and they have to be thinking we gotta make the playoffs. And yeah. without Ezekiel Elliott, you have you're gonna be having a hard time doing that. Oh yeah, and they're gonna they're gonna wear out Dak if that's the case. Oh yeah, like he he'll be done by game nine. Yeah. So so I got I got one more question, and I wanna I wanna hear you your voice on this though. So right. I I recently looked at um a quarterback ranking, fantasy quarterback ranking, mm-hmm. um to get gain some inspiration from. Look at some of the projections, and uh, I saw Russell Wilson at spot number six, and I saw Baker Mayfield at number five. Oh wow! Whose yeah. rankings were these? Uh, I think it was. I think it was someone on NFL.com. Now we know that that NFL.com writers aren't necessarily the most sane or sober people whenever they write stuff. That's just for some. Sometimes that's just the case. As much as I like, I like uh, their work, obviously. Um, but that that did surprise me a little bit. I think it was Patrick Mahomes that won. It was uh, it was Andrew Luck. I think Carson Wentz and uh, and Aaron Rodgers were in there. And uh, and then you had yeah Baker Mayfield five and uh, and Russell Wilson six. Now to me Russell Wilson has always been a top three fantasy quarterback. Yeah, see sometimes people get drunk on the new guy in town. You know they yeah. they want to believe and I believe I believe in Baker Mayfield. But oh for you sure can't yeah. Just off of a few games, rank him higher than a guy that is produced in fantasy year after year yeah. after year. And exactly. Baker Mayfield is not going to get you rushing touchdowns like no. Russell Wilson will. He might you get know. you receiving touchdown. Yeah, I mean, and it's not even <laughs> even in PPR. You're not going to get. Oh, hold on, I think I missed your joke. <laughs> Who, he got a rec- <laughs> he, he. I think he caught like a a two two point play last year. They had like a Philly special thing going. With the oh, Browns. okay, okay. So yeah, he, 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 caught, I, he caught he yeah, caught one. Yeah. yeah. I he called that. <laughs> I was, you know, when you first said that, I, I might have made a yeah, thought of the, yeah, the Marcus Mariota self pass, you know. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, he, he caught, he caught one, he caught one last year. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I get that he's got much more talent. He's, he's throwing to uh, arguably the best receiving core in the league, and uh, yeah. that is going. That of course is going to help him out. And I, I get it. Any quarterback in that offense would be boosted in fantasy, but. I'll, man, I I'm gonna have to pick Russell Wilson if I'm at, at oh, that spot because yeah. I just know that's the guy I can go with, and he's gonna make it happen no matter what. Early. You definitely want to go with Russell over Baker, yeah. And not not guaranteeing that you know it's gonna end the season that way, but based on history, you really need to go with Russell Wilson over yeah. Baker. Oh yeah. Uh, maybe it was a Cleveland fan. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was. <laughs> maybe it was. I don't know. I mean, I, I get the the hype around the the Browns. By the way, did you see that video of, of Baker Mayfield at the baseball game? Uh, no, I didn't catch that one. What was it? He was at a, he was at an, uh, a Cleveland Indians game, and then uh, he he was just hanging out. He got a, a like a, a beer thrown at him by some fan. He just grabbed it and chucked the whole thing. And uh, I, I I was like immediately I looked I looked up Colin Cowherd's reaction to it, and it was kind of like I was expected the whole uh, uh, you know. I didn't ba- know you know that Baker. One. I didn't, I didn't Baker see the video for myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Baker Mayfield looked a bit like he's a bit too good at chugging beers. You know, a kind of suspicious sort of thing. <laughs> but uh yeah i, I think i think yeah. we're 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 still in in the green but uh yeah as little of as of as possible of that please and, and yeah, exactly. as as much That's... on on field stuff you know it's uh the, the, i I love, I love this score too like the, the browns might be the most uh the most fun or interesting frat house in the league but like that doesn't <laughs> that doesn't win championships in the nfl anymore That's true yeah and dude they do have some party animals on staff yeah. there but man, wow. you gotta gotta keep them together and make it happen. The talent's there. Uh, mm-hmm. I've said since he came in the league that the best that can happen is that during the entire offseason, I don't hear his name, and during yeah. the season, I hear his name plenty. And that's for the most part what happened. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that did occur that way, and there was no 
not that much negative news about him uh, in in the entire off season. So they, they've they've made it. Now he's with the team again, uh, and they've got him under control. At least they should have for the for the most part. And uh, mm-hmm. they are looking at a at a good future in in, in that case. But uh, yeah, that that uh, was just a kind of a, a fun thing. He also had a, he also been growing a really cool mustache. He's going like for the sixties quarterback look. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna go throwback. Yeah. But in my rankings, I'm definitely not putting him over Russell Wilson. No, I have no, him no. Actually, behind Matt Ryan, so he's going. Around I, I think I, I, I would, I would have him behind Ryan Brees and maybe even Philip Rivers. That, that's, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I get, I get, I get the the idea though. It's going to be a great offense, and the, the receivers, uh, I got, I got pretty high. So, uh, it's going to be an explosive team, no doubt about that. It's going to be interesting, but maybe too overhyped in some some regards. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm pulling up my rankings right now. Sorry. Uh, I have him. I do have him. I have him behind Matt Ryan and ahead of Carson. No, I have him behind Carson Wentz. Sorry. All right. Um, I have Matt Ryan, then Carson Wentz, then Baker Mayfield, then Drew Brees, Cam Newton, and Kyler Murray. All right. Wow, Kyler Murray. Oof. That's. Yeah, I mean. Be- well, because of the air raid offense. Uh, yeah. Uh, Hey, but man, I, I mean, have him lower than a lot of people. That seems like a bit of a high risk thing to me. But okay, that's that's me. I uh, I look all, at all that stuff from more of a um, actual football perspective, and I can I just see the the big risk associated with him mm-hmm. from the the, the the scouting. But I mean, yeah, I get how he's an exciting fantasy player. He's you know, is his oh. top end, his his ceiling is definitely Russell Wilson. No, oh, yeah, of course. And the fact is, for Kyler Murray, I. I, as high as well, low or high, depending on how you want to look at it. Where I have him, he's actually going much earlier than that in the average yeah. draft. So, but that's the reason I'm not gonna I'm not gonna draft him because he's exactly. Over-hyped. That's that's, that's just how that's just how it is. Kyle Murray is is absolutely undraftable in fantasy, just going way too high for way shit with exactly. the risk that's associated. He's not a quarterback that you invest in, it, mm-hmm. in my opinion. But uh, I think that's it for today. Been a good show. Uh, football is back. I said it in the beginning. It's, it's it's we're back. Preseason week one. Finally, man. We always have to wait like a half year. It's crazy, but we are back. And um, I'm I can't wait. I can't wait for this weekend. I can't wait to see these games. I can't wait to see how hard you know hard knocks keeps going. And uh, oh, yeah. it's gonna be fantastic. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, we're gonna have uh, another show next week and over the course of this preseason, and then. Uh, the big one is back. We're going to be predicting uh, the regular season, and uh, we're going to have to still have to, to uh, talk about some stakes for our bets, but uh, I, I think it's going to be a pretty good competition. Looking forward to it. I already have my week one written out. All right. Oh, yeah, because because <laughs> you accidentally did it. All right. Yeah, I'm going to hold I mean, you. I'm going to hold you to that. Well, I may have to adjust them if we're doing it yeah. after preseason, but that's what yeah, I'm we will. Right like, now, like, before like if. If Aaron Rodgers breaks a collarbone week three of the preseason, you're not going to pick the Packers week one. Exactly. Or any week, for that matter. So. <laughs> yeah. But we'll, yeah. but we'll talk about that when that comes around. So uh, thank you Sean for being Kaiser. on the show. <laughs> the show oh. for sure. <laughs> thank you for <laughs> yeah, right. doing another uh, show. Yeah. If you're, on, if you're watching on Beyond Football, go check out Smokey's channel, the Trash Talkers, link in the description. Uh, full is. of entertainment, whatever you whatever you want. You got to kill some time. Uh, you don't want to kill time, but your procrastination is making you do it. Go check out their channel. Fantastic uh, talk shows, podcasts, very interesting personalities. Um, and if you're on their channel and you're a football fan, sports fan, you might look for some more uh, specialized channel in that direction. Come on over Beyond Football. Check out some of the stuff I'm doing. Uh, part-time hobby uh, football scout researcher and I also do predictions with Smokey as you can see on our, in our weekly uh, sportscast. So thank you for watching Smokey. You got anything to add? I think that's about it for this week. Alright. Been a great show and uh, we're going to see you in the next one. Yep. We'll see you then. Deuces. <laughs>